In short, yeah, yeah, we, we probably do. Hello and welcome back to the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel, where of course we're giving you all the latest news, views and opinions on all things Albion. We're back again with another video talking all things Albion. As per usual, we're going to be discussing do West Bromwich Albion need Daryl DK this January? We're going to be taking a look at the stats, we're going to be taking a look at the facts about the American international, taking a look at whether he's really the man to fill Albion's goal-scoring void. We'll be taking a look into the stats and facts about the American, but make sure you leave your comments down below to see if you think that we, if we really need him. I mean, we're desperate for a goal scorer, but is he really the man for us? We're going to be discussing all that in today's video. Be sure to subscribe to the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel for more regular content like this, and yeah, you may be able to see that we're in a slightly different angle. We've got a brand new camera, so let us know how that goes. Drop your comments in the in the section below. Let me know, do you think it's working or not? I mean, it, it's, it's new, but if there are any technical hitches, I'd love to hear them because, uh, yeah, it's, it's all down to you guys. But yeah, we'll be getting straight into this video all about Daryl DK, seeing whether he is the guy to take Albion towards promotion this season. Be sure to subscribe, drop your comments down below, and let's get straight into it. <laughs> So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's crack on and take a little bit of a dive into what we can expect from Daryl DK. Is he the man to take Albion towards promotion? I've probably asked that about 10 times already. Uh, in short, he, he probably is, but let's take a deeper dive into what sort of a, a character he is, what sort of a player he is. Can he fill the gap in Albion's striker line? Is he the guy to lead us forward? Let's take a little look. So... In profile, he's a 21-year-old American international. He's currently playing his football at Orlando City, whose season uh, just finished last month. In fact, because of the American playoffs, it's a weird season. I think it lasts. It goes from it goes from March to I think November. So yeah, if you if you're interested in your uh, MLS football, that's the kind of format that that happens really with 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 that format. It's not like your English season that goes you know from August to May. It goes from February to around November time, depending on whether you make the playoffs, which is the ultimate you know cash prize where you get the trophy at the end of it. So his season has in effect just finished. The way that and, and obviously he was on loan at Barnsley last season. The way they got him is because they got him in the middle of that that kind of gap between the season. They were like, oh, we'll, we'll only miss two months of your season next time. So I think that's the kind of sort of what, what West Brom are kind of trying to look at a little bit uh, and trying to sort of replicate what he did at Barnsley, really. Trying to, if, if they are to go for a deal, which we'll discuss the deal towards the end of the video and what sort of deal we could expect to see for Daryl DK. But yeah, I think, yeah, he's, he's, he's obviously a, a high scorer in, in, a, in a few different divisions, but currently playing his uh, football at Orlando City, Obviously, MLS isn't, I'm going to say it, I, I, I mean no offence because I do watch the MLS from time to time. I, I do like my Minnesota United, if uh, that's if that's your tipple. I, I do I do watch a few games that, from time to time. Uh, it's not the greatest standard of football. Let's, let's be fair, it's not the Premier League. It's it's probably not, it's probably not even the championship. So I feel like Daryl DK, it's, it's difficult to judge him on his goal scoring record uh, at Orlando, to be quite honest. It, it is difficult to judge it on that. I mean, you know, he's a completely different player when it comes to English football. You have to judge him on the form that he took in English football. But if we crack on and take a look at his form last season, obviously on loan at Barnsley, a six-month loan, a half-season loan deal, obviously went back to Orlando for, you know, sort of mid-season for them, really, uh, just at the end of Barnsley's uh, playoff campaign, obviously played under Valerian Ishmael who is a, a character of topic at the moment. If you want to leave your thoughts about Valerian Ishmael down in the comments below, I'd love to hear them because it's a very mixed debate on Twitter at the moment. Uh, and I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys say and, and whether you think that a striker is all we need this January. You know, I'll pose you the question now if you like and you can comment your thoughts down below. Do you think that the striker is solves the issues in the squad alone or do you think it's it's a bit deeper than that because there's a, certainly a bit of a debate going on on twitter and social media about that so yeah be sure to drop your comments in the comments below i'd love to hear what you th what you think about that but yeah last season he scored nine goals in 13 starts for barzi that's bear in mind i think he played 18 appearances for barzi but 13 starts he used quite sparingly to be honest by ishmael i think that was a bit a bit odd for me, to be honest. If you bring in a striker, you, I, from my understanding and from a lot of reporting understanding, it was it was a hefty loan fee that Barnsley paid. So I couldn't quite grasp why Ishmael didn't didn't quite you know utilise him to the full uh, capacity that he potentially could have. But yeah, I think 
you know, nine goals in 13 starts is an incredible record. And it's certainly better than, I think, you know, a lot of the, well, I say Colin Grant's probably up that tally now, but, you know, not in those many games. You know, he's played a hell of a lot more games than Daryl DK did last season. And, you know, for me, I do feel like, you know, Daryl DK has got a fantastic record in the championship, even though he's only been here for a season. It feels like I'm talking about it like he's a seasoned goal scorer in the Champions, like, like he's a Dwight Gale or, you know, back in the day, a David Nugent or somebody like that. He's not. He's been here for a season. And I feel like a lot of Albion fans just need to remember that, including myself. I do get carried away with this kind of transfer. I need to remember that, you know, perhaps Daryl DK, you know, there is a little bit more than... Um, there is a little bit more than, you know, just that season. You know, you need, you need to try and look a little bit wider as to how he might get on in the future rather than just that season. You know, we're not talking about a season striker just yet, but it does feel like he is that season championship goal scorer in a way. It feels like you've seen the talent, you've seen a glimmer of that talent and now you want to expand it and you want to sort of make it a bit more, uh, a bit, a bit more expanded, really. He, he had an XG of 5.2 last season. Nine goals from a 5.2 expected goals. That is ridiculous from Daryl DK. I mean, it proves that Barnsley, you know, may not have created the masses of chances for him, but he's certainly managing to carve out some opportunities of his own, which is really interesting, in my opinion. I think, you know, to, to completely overperform your XG like that is something that, you know, is magnificent. And I feel like he's done a fantastic job doing that. Uh, yeah, I think a goal every 143 minutes. So, you know, goal every game and a half or so is really good. I mean, that's a fantastic record. I just, I can't understand why Ishmael used him sparingly. I can only understand that he was he may have been a little too creative or something like that. I'm, I'm not going to make jives in this video. No, that's for that's certainly for another one. But, you know, it's a, it's a little bit weird how, um, you know, Daryl DK, he, he's scoring all these goals. He's being the best, you know, one of the better strikers in the championship towards the second half of that season. But he was used so sparingly. I mean, yeah, Barnsley fans have got rave reviews about him. I was on a Barnsley show just before the Barnsley game and they they asked me about him on the show and I was like, you know, I feel like he's the man to take us forward. But, you know, they were like, they were like, no, if you get him, you are going up. Like, if, if you get him, he is an incredible striker. You do have to be careful when you judge it like that because maybe, you know, Barnsley, you know, that is an incredible player to have for you know you know in, in a championship relegation battle you know if you if you're in that if where which is where they are last season this season sorry so it's got a little bit hard to judge as to how good he actually was but they are absolutely raving about him to me and you know if that's the case I'd love to see how he gets on because you know since then if we talk a little bit about that yes it is Orlando City I'm going to call in a friend in a minute to come and tell me a little bit about him but 15 starts 10 goals 6.9 xg so it's a massive over over performance again I mean how he's scoring these goals I mean I have no idea I've seen a few of the goals seen a few of the clips seen watched all his goals at Barnsley and I, I mean it's over performance in abundance in both xg categories you know both the championship and the MLS but I'm going to call in our friend. I'm going to call in Andy Colton, who was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, the Baggies podcast. If you haven't checked out every single episode, I recommend you queue them up and you, you sit down and you listen to them all right now. No, but yeah, Andy Colton, he lives in New Hampshire in America. He supports New England Rev Revolution. He's seen Daryl DK in the flesh. And here's what he had to say about what exactly he thinks the American could bring to the side. He spoke about this on an episode of the Baggies podcast, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already. Looking at DK, you know, I've seen DK play out here for mm. Orlando City. Um, he's one of those old players. Their season's over. He's going to get somewhere. There's no way he's going to sit on his backside between now and sort of, you know, May, June when the MLS starts again. So, you know, seeing him, he'd be an absolute fantastic sign. We'll get, we'll get DK, but it's a big if. Would he be your pick, Andy, if, if, you ha if you're, you know, the in charge of transfers? Do you think he's the guy that you'd want to bring in? The worry is, Louis, is that, you know, Premier League, because so in America, it's all viewing figures. And, uh, yeah, you know, he got, he got some acclaim over here for playing for Barnsley, but no one really watches Barnsley over here. Premier League's on every, you know... On all sorts of channels, you know, it's a national TV, it's a very cheap way of watching a sport. It's also a great time of day, you know, there's no competition nine in the morning, 11 in the morning, 12 30. And there's so many kids now wearing Premier League shirts. And, uh, you know, even if plays a you know, team like Burnley, you know, it'll be on TV a lot more and he'd probably fit their system quite well, it'd be better, a lot better, apart from Chris Woods. Yeah. who seems to at the moment. I mean, they seem defensively quite good. So it's a matter of, you know, money, what, what uh, Barnsley wants. 
uh, sorry, what Orlando City won last, I think, last year. What Orlando won since it, but he's, he's fit. He, he was out until about November, came back. I saw one of his early games. Strong as an ox, he's great off the ball, he's fast. He, um, he, he definitely is a real handful and is raw. And as I say, Val knows how to get the best out of him. So if he comes up, yeah, go for it. So that was Andy's thoughts. He's obviously very convinced that he is the man for us. But compared to our current options, how does he kind of line up against the strikers such as Callum Robinson, Jordan Hugo, which I suppose are our only two real strikers in terms of senior strikers that, you know, obviously we've got lots of strikers in the academy, but they, they dare not let be, be let out the case just yet. But, I mean, we scored 30 goals so far as a side from an XG of 44. That's an underperformance of 14 goals. That is ridiculous. I mean, we've missed out on 14 goals this season. That is, you know, that could be a win. It could be 14 wins. I mean, it, it probably isn't. You know, we have lost games by more than one goal margin. But, yeah, I mean, that is that is 30 goals from next year, 44. I mean, you know, if you score all those, you're, you're in with a, you're onto a winner in most cases. But we genuinely do need a striker. Does that solve all our issues? I've asked you that already in the episode, so make sure you leave your comments down below. I, I feel like there is a little bit more to it than a striker, but I do feel like a striker is significantly going to help the team. Chris, uh, I'm going to say Cristiano Ronaldo because I've got him written down as CR7. Callum Robinson, number seven, has played you know over 100 more minutes than Daryl DK did in his loan spell. That's in six months. And, and he scored five less goals. I mean, that's no disrespect to Callum Robinson. I do feel he's a good player and I feel like he's a winger. Let's let's face it, he's a winger. Uh, I do feel like he gets in some good position. I do feel like he tries quite hard, but I do feel like he hasn't got the quality to play up front. But he's played 100 more minutes than DK and, and scored five less goals. But yeah, Jordan Hugo underperforms his XG by five goals. That is ridiculous. I mean, I, I need I say any more than that about Jordan Hugo. I feel like he's not the guy to play up front for us. Whether Norwich want him back, I mean... They are more than welcome to try and to try and take him back. I mean, that's completely fine. But, you know, it's it's a difficult, difficult situation because we obviously need the striker. Daryl Deke has got the stats, but can we actually get a deal done? It's a completely different picture, to be honest. Uh, we'll go to, uh, you know, um, somebody that, you know, I've met myself, Joe Massey from the Express and Star, who, who's chatted a little bit about this on both the Bra Baggies broadcast, which is a podcast I definitely, I know it's another Albion podcast. Oh, no, uh, it's my favourite Albion podcast, and that includes the one I do. I'd recommend you go and check it out. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's by himself and, and the new, and Johnny Drury, who's just joined the Express and Star. So, yeah, this is the sort of thing he said. I took a few notes from it and, and kind of just tried to pinch it for this little video. Uh, he says that it's going to, Joe Massey says it's going to have a significant loan fee thought to be about two million uh, pounds, which in essence isn't a lot when you think about it. But when you think about it for a six month loan, that is quite a lot. When you think about a Manchester United are trying to charge six million pounds to take Anthony Marshall out on loan for six months. The deal potentially would also include a mandatory buy option if West Bromwich Albion are to go up. And also, it's that loan fee, really, that could put West Brom off. I think that's the that's the issue. I think Albion could very well be put off by that loan fee because, you know, it's fine to pay for a permanent fee. I mean, the permanent fee, I, I'd estimate, is going to be 15 million or something like that uh, for, if, if we go up. So that's not so bad. I think that's actually probably the, the best thing that could happen for West Brom. I think, you know, if you get if you get the buy option on him and you get the, you know, 15 million, you could be selling for a lot more in the future. So I think that's probably the best part of the deal. The loan fee, you essentially play, you know, every three months, every couple of months that he plays or something like that, you're, you're paying a million. I mean, it's is it going to be worth it? His record says it will be. I mean, whether that solves all your problems in the squad, whether that solves all the issues potentially with the manager, I don't know. But I do feel like a striker goes a long way to helping us out. Crystal Palace are also interested in him. That's worth noting. Leeds also taking a look at him. But I've heard from some reporters that perhaps he, Leeds aren't going to take that much of an interest in him. But the Crystal Palace potentially could. So will a deal be done for Daryl DK this summer, this January? Sorry, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you any more than the next guy. But I hope it does because I do feel like he's going to be the one to lead Albion forward up front. I feel like he's the spearhead of the attack that we need. He's a bit of a focal point. He's going to join up those attacks a bit better than we certainly have been of late. Drop your comments down below. I'd love to hear them. Do you think Daryl DK is the answer to West Bromwich Albion's striking problems? Drop your comments down below. Be sure to subscribe. Heading for a thousand subscribers. 
I mean, you know, if you want to help us out on that journey, just click subscribe. It literally costs you nothing. You know, it just literally all it means is I pop up every so often if you use YouTube regularly. I mean, it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a blessing if I'm being honest. If you fancy a bit of Albion content, make sure you subscribe, comment down below, drop a like on the video, and and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.